So question number 16, uh, an increase as we move into the articular cartilage area, an increase in advanced glycation end products called AGEs is characteristic of which of the following clinical condition and results in, a path, in which pathologic process? And of course, we all know that the answer is, is a characteristic of osteoarthritis. AGEs are found in aging and osteoarthritic joints and result in increased articular cartilage stiffness and increased brittleness. They're formed from a spontaneous non-enzymatic glycation of proteins, as you see here. Articular cartilage is one of five forms of articular cartilage. It's hyaline or articular cartilage. Others are fibroelastic cartilage in the meniscus, fibrocartilage at tendon and ligament insertions, elastic cartilage like in the trachea, which is not part of orthopedics, and then physeal cartilage, of course, in the growth plate. The function is to decrease friction and distribute load across the joint. It will exhibit stress shielding of the solid matrix components due to high water content, the incompressibility of water, and the structural organization of the proteoglycan and collagen molecules. Composition includes an extracellular matrix, 90% uh, type 2 collagen, uh, as well as proteoglycans, and the chondrocytes form the cells. Remember that that question has been 13 times on the in-service and 16 times on the self-assessment exam. The percentage by weight is primarily water over collagen, over proteoglycans, and then non-collagenous proteins in cells. Elbow arthritis and orthopedic exam, question 21. Which of the following statements is true regarding articular cartilage? Which of the following statements is true regarding articular cartilage? And the answer is that type 2 collagen helps prevent swelling. Uh, the role of collagen and articular cartilage provide the structural framework to resist swelling under high osmotic tissue pressure created by agricans. The type 2 collagen is the predominant type in articular cartilage. Again, high level of questions regarding this. And so the GAGs, all the different answers that you see here to the right are very important. But normal aging involves a decrease in the water content of the extracellular matrix, while osteoarthritis is associated with increased water content which leads to a loss of strength and elasticity. Let's say that again because that's a common test question. Normal aging involves a decrease in the water content of the extracellular matrix, while osteoarthritis is associated with increased water content, which leads to a loss of strength and elasticity. Articular cartilage components are the extracellular matrix. Water makes up 65 to 80 percent of the mass of the articular cartilage, a common question accounts for 80% of the weight near the surface and 65% near the deep zone. Water content decreases with normal aging and increases with osteoarthritis. The extracellular matrix is made of collagen, uh, type 2 collagen accounting for 90 to 95% of the total collagen content. Small amounts of type 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 collagen are also present, but primarily type 2 collagen. What is the main biologic effect of agrican in cartilage? What is the main biologic effect of agrican in cartilage? Remember, we've been talking about water content. And so the, the answer would be two. That is the correct answer. Remember, agrican binds hyaluronic acid to attract water, which accounts for its hydrophilic property. It is the predominant proteoglycan in cartilage, and together with chondroitin sulfate chains, they help to create a hydrophilic viscous gel that decreases the coefficient of friction as well as to absorb compressive loads. Articular cartilage components, again, become uh, are the extracellular matrix, which is primarily proteoglycans. This makes up 10 to 15 percent of cartilage. The function is to provide compressive strength and to attract water. Agrican is the most responsible for hydrophilic behavior. Uh, again, this is a high question. Agrican is the most responsible substance for hydrophilic behavior in articular cartilage, produced by chondrocytes. Question number one, which of the following contributes most to the ability of hyaline cartilage to attract water? Common question, we just talked about that, of course, is agrican, because agrican molecules bind to hyaluronic acid molecules, form link proteins, and to form known as proteoglycan, which attracts water. Again, that's the part of arthritis. Articular cartilage components include cells, chondrocytes, which produce collagen, proteoglycans, and enzymes. 
They derive from chondroblasts that are trapped in lacuna and become chondrocytes. Chondrocyte metabolism responds to both mechanical and chemical stimuli. Immature articulate cartilage has stem cells, while mature articular cartilage does not have stem cells. So if you inject stem cells, not going to form. Which of the following best describes the appearance of chondrocytes and orientation of, chondro, of collagen fibrils in the superficial zone of articular cartilage? So we're going to move now into this zone. And the answer is five. I always have trouble with this, to be honest with you. Flattened chondrocytes oriented parallel with the tide mark and collagen fibrils oriented parallel to the tide mark. So collagen fibrils oriented, oriented parallel to the tide mark. The layers of articular cartilage, as we see here, are the superficial zone, which is what we see on arthroscopy, the transitional zone, which is deeper, the deep zone, you have then the tide mark here, and then the subchondral bone and cancellous bone. Cancellous bone is where the stem cells can come up. Type 2 collagen orientation is parallel <clears throat> to the joint, flattened chondrocytes, condensed collagen fibers, and sparse proteoglycans. The only zone where articulate cartilage progenitor cells have been found is in the superficial zone. The intermediate zone of articulate cartilage has type 2 collagen, has an oblique or random organization. Here, it's the thickest layer with round chondrocytes and abundant proteoglycan content. The deep zone here has type 2 collagen perpendicular to the joint and crosses the tide mark. It has the highest concentration of proteoglycans as well as round chondrocytes arranged in columns as you see here. Deep zone, chondrocytes in columns. The tide mark is deep to the basal layer here and separates true articular cartilage from the deeper cartilage that has a remnant of the articular cartilage analog which participated in enchondral ossification. The tide mark divides into superficial uncalcified cartilage and the division between nutritional sources for the chondrocytes. The tide mark is found only in joints and is most prominent in the adult and non-growing joint. Lastly, subchondral bone as you see here. And then a new question. Okay, so articular cartilage, question number nine, elbow arthritis and arthroplasty exam A. Research Researcher studies growth factors that have positive effects on cartilage healing. In vivo and in vitro experiments are performed with growth factor A, an unknown. The properties of growth factor A include, one, it is most widely investigated growth factor in cartilage repair. Two, it increases extracellular matrix synthesis in cartilage and mesenchymal stem cells. And three, it also triggers synovial proliferation and fibrosis. Which of the following is most likely to be growth factor A? And that's transforming growth factor beta, beta 1, TGF beta 1. It stimulates the synthesis of extracellular matrix and causes synovial proliferation and fibrosis. TGF beta is the most thoroughly investigated member of the TGF beta family. Um, and besides the above activities, it also stimulates chondrocyte synthetic activity and decreases the catabolic activity of, of IL-1. So in articular cartilage, we have several growth factors. PDGF is thought to be involved with the healing of articular cartilage lacerations. Its effects are extrapolated from PRP, which contains it. No adverse effects are noted in, in normal joints. TGF beta stimulates proteoglycan and extracellular matrix synthesis, decreases catabolic activity of IL-1 and MMPs, causes synovial proliferation and fibrosis, and induces osteophyte formation. Basic fibro fibroblastic growth factor stimulates DNA synthesis in articular chondrocytes, and then IGF-1 stimulates DNA cartilage matrix synthesis in adult articular cartilage. <clears throat> Articular cartilage nourishment and metabolism is interesting. Cartilage is avascular. It is nourished by the synovial fluid at the surface and subchondral bone at the base. It, re it relies on glycolysis for ATP production. Question number 33. A 32-year-old runner sustains a trimalleolar left ankle fracture. She undergoes open reduction and internal fixation and is kept non-weight bearing after surgery. At two months, what changes will occur in the articular cartilage 
of both her knees as a result of her current weight-bearing regimen? And the answer is cartilage thinning on the left ipsilateral knee and no change in the cartilage thickness on the right or contralateral knee. After a period of offloading, the offloaded limb will experience cartilage thinning. The contralateral limb will not demonstrate any cartilage changes. This is a very common question and noted one time on the in-service and three times on self-assessment exams. Articular cartilage has a mechanical response to loading. Physiologic stress stimulates matrix synthesis and inhibits chondrolysis. Excess stress suppresses matrix synthesis and promotes chondrolysis. The cellular response where the primary cilia act as a mechanosensory organ on chondrocytes and osteoblasts allows transduction of mechanical sig signals involving integrins. Repetitive loading, such as moderate running, increases cartilage thickness and proteoglycan content. Strenuous loading, however, can lead to cartilage thinning and proteoglycan loss. Immobilization also leads to cartilage thinning, softening, and proteoglycan loss. Articular cartilage wear mechanics, there are multiple forms of lubrication. There is elastohydrodynamic elasto lubrication, where the, which is the main mechanism during dynamic joint function. It's an elastic deformation of the articular surfaces, and thin films of lubricant separate the surfaces, allowing a fully congruent joint will not allow this fluid film to form. Boundary uh, lubrication is bearing surface is non-deformable. Lubricant is only partially separates the surfaces, and the superficial zone proteins have a role in this lubrication mechanism. Boosted uh, lubrication is fluid entrapment. These are concentrations of lubricating fluid in pools. Hydrodynamic fluid separates surfaces when one surface is sliding on another. And then weeping lubrication is where fluid shifts out of articular cartilage in response to load. Wear mechanisms are adhesions, abrasion, transfer, fatigue, and third body wear. Cartilage aging. With age, changes occur in articular cartilage. That includes, includes increase in chondrocyte size, protein content, stiffness, and increase in the ratio of proteoglycan keratin sulfate to chondroitin sulfate. There's a decrease in the absolute number of cells. The matrix becomes hypocellular despite the fact that the individual chondrocytes are increasing in size. Water content differentiates from osteoarthritis where water content actually increases. So again, in normal aging, the water content uh, decreases, whereas in osteoarthritis, water content increases. And this is a tested article uh, in biomedical research on the age-related changes in articular cartilage and osteoarthritis. And you can see this article referenced here to the right on that journal. With cartilage aging, advanced glycolysation end products or AGEs form. These are spontaneous non-enzymatic glycation of proteins uh, and the accumulation of AGEs has been thought to play a role in the development of osteoarthritis of the knee and ankle. So in cartilage aging, water in aging is decreased, but in osteoarthritis increased. This is asked almost on every test, so you guys really need to know this. The modulus and stiffness in increased with normal aging, but decreased in osteoarthritis. Chondrocytes are fewer as we age, but of increased size. In osteoarthritis, they cluster in late uh, osteoarthritis. We have increased keratin sulfate with normal aging. Uh, and then the glycosaminoglycans, proteoglycans, collagen, all change as you see here. As far as cartilage healing is concerned, deep lacerations through the tide mark lead to fibrocartilaginous healing. This is the whole principle of microfracture, which we all do. This occurs when lacerations travel through the tide mark and go down into the subchondral bone, down this far. It has to get into subchondral bone. A healing response is initiated with hematoma, stem cell migration out of that subchondral bone, and vascular ingrowth. This produces type 1 collagen, not type 2, with resultant fibrous cartilage rather than the desired hyaline cartilage as produced by chondrocytes. A superficial laceration that does not extend to the tide mark, things that, are, that occur in this area, uh, basically lead to chondrocytes proliferating, but no healing whatsoever uh, because of the avascular nature of cartilage. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.